using the USB. And we've got, in this case, I've got the Jiffy DOS EEPROM actually installed in the socket. What we're gonna do in a second is we're gonna read that in uh, to show you, you can actually read chips. Right now, it's actually not set up for it correctly. So let's just give you a little quick tour of the software. This button here allows you to actually find chips. You can type in the label here to actually find them. Uh, once you've actually done that a few times, you will have these recently used profiles. So you can go in there and actually get them. That's, that's pretty useful. Now you've got the obviously very important programming button here. When you're ready to actually write out a chip to burn it, uh, you've got verify. And what that will do is it will compare what's in the current buffer here and what's actually on the chip in the burner and compare them and actually read the data, compare the data in the buffer and make sure that they are the same. And if they are the same, then it's verified. You can blank check. You can't blank the EEPROM using this programmer. You can only write to it. Once it's written to it, as I said earlier, you need to use the, the eraser uh, box of death. So yeah, but basically this is a blank check. So it'll just read in the data from the chip, make sure that it's all blank based on what it says in the spec for the EEPROM. You saw earlier, it said that it should be FFF or one. Some EEPROMs, it would be zero. So it just basically checks that it's either zero or FFF, which is the equivalent of one. And, and that makes sure that the, the EEPROM is blank and ready to be written to. Okay, we obviously need to load in the right profile. So I'm gonna go here to uh, here and I put in 27C64. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in the wrong profile. So the thing is there are lots of 27C64s and don't get into the habit of thinking that all 2764s are the same. So for instance, let's say that, let's have a look at this one. Let's select that one. Yeah, this one, for instance, is a 12 volt EEPROM. If you were to use this profile with the EEPROM that we currently have in the programmer, it will not write to it correctly. It will read it actually. Let's try that now. Let's actually try, try just reading it. So read and it says that, and then we'll try and read. And I'm gonna make a mistake here. So let's just let that read. Okay, it's saying that it is not in correctly. So let's go back. I think we need to change check ID and pin detect. Let's try that and try reading it again. Read, there we go. And it's actually read in the data. So the reason why you wanna do that is sometimes the EEPROM has the wrong pin setup and very often the ID is not matching with the profile. So what you can do is you can just disable the check. Uh, you will tend to find that every time the software loads, these are turned on, but you can disable these. These are perfectly safe to do that when you're reading. It's just basically saying, don't do these checks. So we can do a blank check. Don't forget right now, this EEPROM has Jiffy DOS written to it. So this should fail. So let's do a blank check, blank, and then it's gonna check it and it's gonna fail. That's because it's got data on it. As you saw, we just read the data. So next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load in the right profile. So let's do, what was the full name? It was MBM 27C64. Uh, and you can see you've only got one option actually, and it's Fujitsu. So that is actually the correct profile that we wanna use. So let's just load that up. There we go. And what we're gonna do now is let's try and read again. Read, yeah, that works perfectly fine. And you can see there's the data. So you can read in the contents from a chip and you can then write that out to a file if you wish to. And that is how people actually get data off chips. You find the right profile, you stick it in the programmer and then you can read the data off it and then store that as a backup, as an example. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to clear the current buffer. I'm just gonna blank it, there we are. So now we haven't got any data in here. So if we were to try and write this, program it, it would basically try to write out a blank EEPROM, which would be stupid. That's not gonna be any good to us. So, so what we wanna do is we wanna load in the data. So I'm gonna go and load, and I'm gonna go and browse. And let me bring that in here. So you can see that I have a number of different EEPROMs data sheets here in the Jiffy DOS folder. That's just for reference. And if you go down here, you'll see there is a Jiffy DOS 1541 bin. There is also a Jiffy DOS 1541.2, which is a different size, 16K. But you can see that the one that we actually want to use is this one here. So let's load that. That's 8K. So let's open that. There we are. So let's pay attention to this now. So have a look at the top row here. You can see you've got H space, and then you've got open uh, round bracket. And then on the second line, you've got exclam exclamation mark H. So remember that if you can. The chances are that if we read in that data, it should match what we have 
on the EEPROM, right? So let's just clear the buffer again. So going to clear contents, there we go. And let's just read in the data again. And there we are, you can see H, open round bracket, exclamation mark H. It looks like it's the right data. Can we tell if it's the right data though? So what we wanna do is now is we wanna clear the buffer again. So we're gonna clear the buffer. We're gonna load the buffer again off disk. So we're actually gonna load up the Jiffy DOS ROM. And what we have in the EEPROM in the burner should be the same data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a verify and it's gonna do a comparison between the data in the buffer that we've just loaded and the data which is currently present on the EEPROM in the burner, okay? So let's just click on verify. And you can see it's verified it. It said that the data in the buffer and on the EEPROM match. So there we are, that shows that our EEPROM has been burned correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out that EEPROM and I'm going to try and burn a new EEPROM with the same data, okay? So yeah, let me take the EEPROM out and now I'm gonna put in the blank EEPROM, making sure I get it in the right socket and make sure then I lock it down. What I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna do a blank check on it and just make sure that it is actually blank. So let's do that. It says the device is blank. So it looks like we're ready to go. We've got the right profile, 21 volts. It should write, hopefully. So let's go for it. Let's try clicking the program button and then writing it. Now, what I'm gonna end up with is, is another EEPROM with Jiffy DOS on it. So I'm gonna to have to crank out the box of death uh, when this works and then pop it in there and that should then blank it and get it back to being ready to be used for something else. But anyway, before we do that, let's try actually program it. So click the program button and cross our fingers and program. Looks like it's doing it. Well, hey. Programming succeeded. Okay, let's go back. Let's clear the buffer and now let's read it. Yeah, looks right, H, angle brackets, etc. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to clear the buffer. We're gonna load the data from disk and we're gonna do a verify. So always a good idea once you've actually written out an EEPROM to do a verification, make sure the, the data is written out correctly. And you can see the verify result is fine. It's actually worked. So there we are. That's great. Interesting question, actually. I wonder what would happen if you actually wrote out a buffer that was basically empty. I'm guessing there's a technical reason why that wouldn't work, why you've actually got to physically empty a chip. Yeah. I guess it's because it can't go back to the empty state, right? It only can flip the bits to the other state. It can't revert them. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So yeah, the only way I can actually get this EEPROM now to be usable again is to put it into the blanker. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. Actually, tell you what, let me just do it now. I'm gonna stick it in there and come back in a second and then we'll blank check it, okay? So yeah, let me just unplug it and take it out. And I'm gonna take and pop it in the box and then we'll give it a blank. Yeah, the drawn this is quite tricky to get open. Okay, that's done. Let's get it out of here. Let's check if it's blank. Okay, so it's been in the uh, blanker for, I think it was about seven minutes. Uh, I think five minutes would do it, but I just wanted to make sure. Let's put, pop it back in the programmer. Make sure it's latched in there. And um, let's do a blank check. Blank check. The device is blank, there you go. So seven minutes in the box of death has sorted it out. We've got it back to a blank state again. Okay, great. So I think that's it in terms of uh, showing you how to use this. Let's move on.